This is not a flight of fancy, but a true story. The point may seem obvious to you, but if so, I must warn you that it is deceptively simple. If you listen closely and stay open, the implications of what I'm about to tell you can change your life. The story begins as Evan and I arrive at Marineland of the Pacific. I didn't realize then the impact the next few weeks would have on my life. Pike most certainly do eat minnows. There's not the slightest doubt about that. Jerry then had to fish out all of the remaining minnows and we left the pike in the tank. Now we were about to recreate an experiment that was first conducted by Mobius over a hundred years ago to see what we could learn. Jerry brought in a five gallon carboy which had the bottom cut out. Put it yeah. right in the middle? Yeah, right in the middle and very slowly. Very, very slowly. He's a temperamental actor, this bike. There we go. All right, now, he's not going to see that. He won't know that that bottle is in there, will he? Sure shouldn't. No. The next step was to pour minnows into the carboy and watch what the pike would do. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. He's going to a fancy restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh! All he gets is a mouthful of sand. That's all he gets. Fantastic. Oh, the pike kept striking at the minnows and bouncing off the bottle. The pike kept trying, and we kept checking, and he kept trying and trying and trying. Uh, doesn't it look like he stopped? Look yeah. that way. Yeah, uh -huh. he's just sitting there. Yeah. Finally give up? Yeah, I think he learned something. Just slowed up a little. And... See, even the nervous system of a fish can learn something. He looks still enough. I think he's learned don't eat the minnows. When the minnows are swimming freely, the question is, what will the pike do? Will he eat the minnows? We're about to get extensional and see what's going to happen. Here we go. <laughs> What's going on? He's just sitting there. He's just sitting there. Look at that. There's something right by his nose. He should, should certainly snap one up here. Yeah, he should. You know, he's still staying. Here comes a, a large group. Let's a lot see what of... happens. Mm. Look at that. That's amazing, isn't it? They're all around it. Oh. I think we can learn something here that will apply to, to our own behavior as humans. That's fantastic. Have you ever noticed that very often the less we know about something, the more certain we are that we know it all. We don't even question our own behavior. He knows what he knows. That's his trouble. And he doesn't know that he doesn't know. He doesn't even bother to check the territory again. See, he makes the faulty assumption that nothing has changed. He never questions his attitudes or his behavior. Here, everything's changed all around him. He's got the possibility now for survival, and what does he do? He just sits there. He doesn't seem to be in touch with the here now at all. He never questions his behavior at all. Fantastic. He better change his attitude very soon, or he'll certainly weaken and die. Yeah, he will. And he did. Survival was possible. The pike had natural food all around him, and yet the pike died of starvation. Think this is just a fish story? Think this doesn't happen to us? Do you know any individuals with the pike syndrome? Sure you do. So do I. There's no doubt about it. I'm sure of it. I know everything about it. Just ask me. Of course I'm not upset. I like to have you bring up these ridiculous ideas. I know what's best, dear. I've always had a feel for the right way. The Pike Syndrome is a disease that we ourselves create and most of us suffer from it at times. When we make faulty assumptions, like the Pike, the results may be disastrous. 
may cause unnecessary conflicts with others, may prevent us from getting what we want, may cheat us of some of the pleasures of living, and we are doing it to ourselves. Well, there, that's what I'm talking about. The Pike Syndrome is like an anchor, preventing us from moving with the tide of change. We take a rigid position. We try to force permanence, to freeze the universe at a given point in time, and it will never happen. Individuals with the Pike Syndrome have limited ways of behaving. And if you know that individual really well, you can almost anticipate just what that person is going to do. I don't have to listen. I have all the facts. I won't talk about it. And I won't change my mind. Once I make up my mind, I'm proud to say I stick to it. If you have an awareness of the Pike Syndrome, you won't feel committed to the past. What's past is past. Experience is valuable, of course, but it must be reevaluated in terms of the here now, this situation, at this moment. So think about the pike as you make a decision or take action. Make every effort to stay in the here now. Check constantly to see if your commitment is still appropriate.